Hey there. Welcome back. This is Charles. We are in module three. We are working. We are we are talking about how to customize the QuickBooks environment. We started talking about preferences over in the first video. Let's go ahead and pick up where we left and continue talking about the different preferences in the QuickBooks. Let's over. Let's head over to jobs and the estimates on the left as our next option. Maybe we can we, 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 we can first of all first save the changes that we we made for our items and inventory. Maybe you can click OK here to save. We go to Edit, Preferences, then we go to Jobs and Jobs and Estimates, then we click to Company Preference. There is something I want you to note. Some of the options. If you change them, they will make QuickBooks to close all the open windows. And that's certainly okay. If it happens, just click OK there. And you will stay in the same preference window. But not everything is closed back there. Let's look at some of these options for jobs and estimates in quickbooks you have the ability to track customers and jobs you do for those customers and these are options for jobs the ones you are seeing here they are all options for jobs if you if you, if you have if you have a construction company, as an example, when you have different jobs, you want to know what stage the job is in. Is it pending? Has it been awarded? Or is it in progress? These are the different options. If you are basically, if let's say, if you're a construction company, they have they had given you to construct a given skyscraper so the question is you are going to be asking your site supervisors that is as the construction the construction ended or awarded are they in progress are they still pending so those are the questions that you may be asking and even here it is the same thing if we have jobs for the customers if you get if you if you if you are let's say carpenter and you get a proposal or a, an offer for maybe 10 chairs the question is you need to be tracking whether these 10 chairs are done they have been awarded to the customer or they are still pending, or they are still in progress. So you need to be checking all those. So these, some of these things are just basically for inventory and jobs, to know the different stages. If you have wrong wording of, for, for any of these, go ahead and just change the right one. Because if you are, if you are, let's say, in, in bank, in the banking, if you are working, let's say, in the department of loans, some of the things, they may not be there. In the progress, those ones will not be there. You, will you can change. You can say, for pending, we can put here. Pending will work for a loan. If, it, if you've been processing a loan, you can say it is still pending. Pending approval. You can say approved disbursed 
fully approval meaning we are we are designing those words based on the industry the the things that are working favorably you can't say it is in progress as if it is a construction because most of the things that that are in construction they are the ones that are still in progress or in production those who are in manufacturing they say the things are still in progress work in progress so you can change the wording by just you can just click there and change these things you can delete them but me i don't want to delete so i'm going to remain to leave it at pending you can change any of those and you put your own words but me i don't want to change anything there just want to let, to let them remain like the way you are the, the way they are but i want you to know you can actually change them if you want One of the things that it asked you, because now we, we, we answered QuickBooks questions in the easy step interview. And one of the things QuickBooks asked you in the easy step interview was, do you create estimates for jobs? If you had not, if maybe if, if, if you had said no, because remember for that question we said yes if you had said no and now you'd like maybe to turn that on this is where you can change it here do you do, do you create estimates you can say no here because for us we said yes that's why it is showing a yes and for us we were okay with the estimates that's why we are seeing the estimate icon in the screen in the home screen So you can change those ones wherever you want. It also asked you in the easy step interview if you do progress invoicing. Of course, we said if you do estimates, you do want progress invoicing too. Remember that. Remember that's going to 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 allow you to invoice a customer for a portion of that estimate all certain items on the estimate and those sorts of things in other words if you have been let's say in, an, in a construction company and you there is if, when those guys are, are negotiating for the for the money for a construction of a skyscraper let's say a three let's say 10 units what happens is that these guys they are going to be completing this construction in stages what that means is that they are going also to receive their payments in stages you can finish the first floor and you submit a, an invoice demanding for the money for the work are done even though you have not completed because there is no way you are going to wait until the whole building is done then you start asking for money from the client so they will, it will allow you progress invoicing will allow you to ask for money for that particular item you have actually finished for the customer it also depends on on the industry so if you do estimates of course you expect to to, to have that that progress invoicing also turned on so So when you look when you look over to, to the left, because now this one is already done, we've not changed anything here. You can just maybe say cancel. Now we come here. The reason I'm coming back because I want you to remember the more I do this, I know it will be easy for you to grasp it. So when you go to payments, for multiple currencies, we can skip that one. And we shall talk about about that a little bit so when you click on that payments i'm going to go ahead and save those changes the changes of course that you've made 
on the other previous one. We saved them. So, there is one option here. There is only one option I want to point out. And this is this may not this may not make make sense to you until until maybe we we go ahead and look at it practically. We shall look at it practically in the in the coming modules, but right now we got to check that we are going to check that that says use any deposited funds as default as default deposit to account this one you are seeing the number three use an deposited funds as default deposit to accounts you will understand that one when we go into into maybe looking at account charts of accounts but now what this means is that when you receive a payment from a customer maybe it is the customer who is paying for an invoice that you sent the money is going to come and that money is going to sit in the charts of accounts and it's going to be in that default account which we call an deposited funds that's money you've received but you haven't deposited it in the bank so when money comes in in the quickbooks what where it first goes it first goes to that undeposited funds so we shall see that how we can have that set The good thing you learn later uh, how that that actually we can put money automatically in different accounts if at all we would want to. Because you have Intuit has a feature that will allow you allow your customer to pay you online. Because you know someone may be receiving money online and it is coming in the system others are paying through deposit they are making direct deposit others are paying through mobile money so they are very different payment modes that customers are allowed to use but we shall stick to those that quickbooks allow we shall not go by mobile money since they are they are they are happening and we stick on that look at the things that are within quickbooks but for us, we know that QuickBooks allow credit card payments and all that, debit cards. So we shall look at some of those things when we go to the respective modules. Because now, when you, when you invoice your customers, or when you invoice a customer, a customer can pay you through, we've said credit card. But we are talking about things that are within QuickBooks. We are not talking about the real life scenarios. We are talking about things that we can actually use in QuickBooks. We can use credit card. We have bank transfer options and others. So, but now, these credit card and bank transfer op options you would have to go in and set those features with with intuit first or with quickbooks first and it will and i i, I will help you to walk you through the process of how we can be able to to do that in quickbooks Now there is what we call the 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 
there is a new feature that will come to those newer versions. Those are the ones that we call payment reminders. Leave, leave alone the reminders you are seeing here, but the, there is those that are specifically within this payment option, the payment reminders. Because it was something that, that came out within the 2020 version. So those that are using QuickBooks for 2020 and above, they can they can actually see that option. The good the, 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 the challenge is here we don't we are using an old version, we are not having that option here, but we shall look at those things. The good thing, I'm giving you some of the things that you expect if we go to a version, let's say. Specifically, we shall go for a version of 2022 or 2021 because at least for those versions, we expect that at least we've seen there are so many things that were added. But some of the things I see in the other versions, I always speak about them so that we can actually know. So by the time we go to the other versions, you will not be seeing new things. We will have seen some of them, even though we may not see them direct here but we i'm going to keep on talking about some of them by the time we reach to the other versions we can be able to see them and be in line to what we have but just know there is nothing much that you're gonna miss just pick the basics from this point we shall be the experts so let's see that that car payment payment reminder for it if you want maybe quickbooks to allow you send a, like set send send a, a, a payment reminder you can check that as a yes or no and the reason for that is that it will prompt the it will prompt you whatever in other words, it will prompt you on the, the like the timing. You may set it and say, I want to, to pay such and such a supplier on this very date and this or, or at this very time. Then QuickBooks can prompt you with an SMS that you can maybe set it that remind me before, maybe remind me one day before. Then QuickBooks can do that. So that you can be able to make timely payment, especially for these. For these taxes, most of them they are supposed to be paid at a given period of time. Like you, they have a deadline that if you pay beyond this, you will pay a penalty. So for those transactions, like those ones, you can set those payment reminders that on such and such, notify me maybe one day or two hours or three hours to that very expiry date or to that deadline. So that that's the next option that may may appear there, though we, though we don't have it. So if we are, well, we've not changed anything, we can just go direct to payroll. Here we have not, we have not, we've not done anything here. But let me go back because I want you to get that procedure well. So we go to payroll, we go to company preference. Now, for this payroll, if you want to use Intuit payroll services, you have to actually turn the feature on. And then QuickBooks will, will walk you through the process of setting that up. The payroll is not for free. Please make sure that you know that the Intuit service, payroll service is not for free. There are different subscription that you can subscribe to and it will walk you through and give you the options for whichever, whichever one you would you, you, you'd want to sign up for. But here, Here's where you can sign up. You can sign up for a full time, sorry, full payroll. 
or an online payroll maybe to just clarify some of some of the things what do they mean there are some options if you don't want to do payroll at all or this is what they call payroll online and if you want to go through those then you can you can click on that there are some there are some that are using that are doing the quickbooks for maybe they are, they are running their payroll they, they have an external person that it does that so that's why here we never we said in the easy step interview that we don't we, we don't we are not going to use payroll that's why here it says no payroll so that's why most of these things they are inactive because we are not going to be using payroll So there are also other options. You may, when you go to a newer version, you may have that option where I've been talking about that you are going to use an external, external, external sub third party to just handle your payroll alone. It will, it will have that option there. But for this version, it has only this. So. Those are the things that we may. But maybe to look at this, there is some there is something that is down down there. There are some preference for employees pay stubs. For these ones, but these these are going to be activated. If at all you are going to use payroll, but since we are not going to you can actually skip skip that and we'll go to the next one but some of the things i just want to take you through so that when you have maybe an option to do some of those things you can you, you can actually know what to do but some of these things that we we may talk about they are those things that work a compensation because you may find that someone has a desk pay, but on the desk pay, there are some other additional things. Someone is maybe entitled for sick leave and all that, vacation, and vacation has some amount of money. There is work, workers' compensation. So there are so many things, some small paychecks and all that. So there are so many things that you will see. And in the newer version, there are other things that you actually see. So when you find your screen looks a bit different, just check the version and you can be able to, to do that. But for this, that's basically what we have for now. As I said, in those newer versions, they, they may also give you reminders here. You may find when they are reminders. But now maybe we look at some of this this part here. The down the 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 down the the, the, the down part here at the bottom. There are some options for how you want employee names to be displayed but these are just these these options are very easy how do you want your employees are you do you want to them to say like for my name you say charles cafe or you want it to be cafe or charles so these are the the way you want the last name to be the first one or you want the first name to be the first so those are just just personal preferences but whichever you make sure you stick to one. If you pick one for consistency purposes, make sure you select one and be consistent on that. If you are to go by last name, go by last name. So that at least you have there is some degree of professionalism. So when, the, when all of those are done, then you can be able to 
go ahead and uh, maybe we click OK because here we have not we've changed nothing. We've not changed so many things. We've changed nothing there. So let's now go to the next one, which is reminders. That is the next option, reminders. This is this is a list of things that QuickBooks will put on the reminder list for you. And you can go down and click, you you check, you you, you check them, you uncheck them because they are very many. The list is endless. So these are some of the things that you, you can uncheck them as you want because these are just reminders. They will send you notifications. They don't not send notifications on the phone, but when you open QuickBooks like that, you just see that reminder message. It pops up uh, immediately after, after you logging in into your QuickBooks. So those are that that's the summary of the things that the reason as why I'm taking some time to just let you go through through for those who are not actually fo doing live following whereby what I do is what you are doing there. So So the good thing here, it may be for to put more clarity on on the on that notification or that reminder. The reminder may come. It may, as I said, it they will not send a reminder on your phone. When you log in like this, you will see those reminders. But how are they going to be looking like? If if let's say you've said, I want to see overdue. Overdue, overdue in invoices, they may send, they may not, because if, if at all they are, they, they, they are over 100 invoices that are still overdue, they may send the total, total amount for the overdue invoice. One billion is overdue. So they may not send all the customers because those will be too much. They, if they are suppliers, they will send a total figure. So that's what we are meaning. It may be in terms of the amount. It may be in terms of maybe the number. That may be there are 10, 10 customers who have maybe who haven't cleared. But you will have that summary. It will be just a summary showing those reminders that you, the way you have set them. So, so there are they, 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 they are more couple of things here that we need to look at. Let, let's maybe look at the sales tax. I want to mention say the mention something about the sales tax here. There we've not changed anything. So we can go to the sales tax. Sales tax. If your company charges sales tax to your customers, then you want to turn the feature on, that feature of sales tax on. Because here, the first question says, do you charge sales tax? Of course, we said we charge. That's why it is on a yes. In the easy step interview, so most of the, of the questions you answer, they are coming from this side, the preferency settings. So if your company does that, you, then you have to 
select yes or no and if you if you if you say maybe yes you would want to set your most common sales tax item you can add it here but those we shall add maybe in a later module and we see some of those you can also assign some sales tax codes those ones you just put any like if let's say you have there are so many taxes that you are going to pay we pay that value added tax if there is indirect so if they if if there is exercise excise duty so there are so many taxes that you are going to be paying so you may assign codes 001 to be maybe for VAT for just identification. So you may assign them those tax codes and they are here. You can select. There are others that are going to be non-taxable, others are going to be taxable, others are going to be exempt, standard rated. So there are so many things that you will, you will, you will do there. And you can see the options. But as I said, I will go into the sales tax. Into I will go into details for that in a later module. So don't worry. Some of the things we are just perusing through, but we shall tackle some of them. Some of them. So we go. We may now go to maybe the next one. We may go to send forms. Here we have not changed anything. So that's why some of these things they are coming very fast. Go to send forms. So on that send form, there is something I want to highlight there. Because now you can go ahead and tell QuickBooks. As I was saying, we can go ahead and tell QuickBooks that I want to change, I want to be sending correspondences, I want to be sending letters, I want to be sending invoices, quotations, and all that, so many things. In terms of texts, I was want to send demand notes, I want to send maybe reminders, and everything that you do in terms of sending correspondence, communicating with the clients, customers, suppliers, and all that. So, when you actually email an invoice, for example, to your customer, you can do it directly in QuickBooks. You don't have to go to go outside, maybe outside QuickBooks, to go to Outlook and all other stuffs. There are some basic templates that are already set up for for these different delivery methods that you can see here we have we have email you can send by email it can be invoice it can be an estimate it can be a statement it can be a sales order it can be a sales receipt so there are so many things you can actually send and they have their templates you can actually add your template here because you may have a format that you want maybe to actually use.
So some of those things, that's how they are. So someone may be wondering, how do, what do these guys mean if, you, if, if let's say they, they just want to, to email a customer or that. What this does is that you can create an invoice and send it to the customer directly using QuickBooks without going to other other methods. And you can use their, they, 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 they have their basic invoice templates. You can go ahead and edit if at all you like. You can open it, the basic invoice is here. You can come here and say, I want to edit it. You click edit. So it, it, it has this kind of information. It is coming from where? Casey Group. Basic invoice. Your invoice, transaction number that for transaction total is attached. Please remit payment set. So. This is the information, the kind of information that you put in company name, telephone number, website, all that. You can just keep editing and you can also check spellings for everything. So you can close that. If you want, you can add your own template if you, if you have a format that you want to use. So those are the those are those are those are the options that are there in send forms so there is another option which is this tax we can maybe look at tax this 1099 we've been talking about sorry 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 i've not saved let me save So let's go to this last one here. Second last, which is tax, which is 1099. Under the company preference here, we have, do you file 1099 forms? It asks you if you file 1099 miscellaneous forms. You can say yes or you can no, say no here. And remember for us, we said we are not going to be handling tax. We, we, we agreed that we assume that we have an external account that is going to be handling our tax. So that's why it is selecting no here. And we did that when we went through the is a step interview. So we can go to the last option, which is time and expenses. So for time and expenses, if you do job costing, you do want to track time or your employees. You, you want actually to track time here. Do you track time? We want because we do job cost costing and we work, want to track ourselves or we want to track or, or to time our employees on the time they spend they spend when they are working on a particular job because that can also help us to know how much we are going to pay them because we may set a wage, a hourly rate, when we are paying based on the number of hours someone has worked. You can just multiply the number of hours times the wage rate and we pay them. So it will help us do so many things. Since we are doing job costing, we need to 
basically job costing for those who don't know it is actually you you look at you first handle that if you get if 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 you may be a carpenter and you are told to do 10 pieces of chair you first sort that order for the customer and it is all done in other words what you do even the material you buy you buy for that specific order the reason as why we are doing so is because every customer is going to come with a different order you can't use the same material you bought for making chairs and you think you can use that material to make a sofa set it is hard since everyone is coming with with his or her own order we buy the material that are specifically for that order and we locate time we track time for the for 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 the work done on that specific job so that's basically how you can understand job costing So for that, so that's that's one of the things that you that we've said. Said if you are doing job costing, we have to allow that, and the good thing we had allowed it. So the other thing is, you set some options here. Here, we need also to know the first day of your work week. In other words, if in a week, when do you start, like, what is the first day of your, of, of, of your, your, your work week? It's like, if you're, if you're working from Monday to Friday, then the first day is going to be Monday. If for you, you are working from Tuesday, then you want to, maybe someone is working from Monday to Sunday. Someone is working from Monday to Saturday. So you put in the first day of your week of work. So for us, we are, we are putting it on Monday. So that one is also fine. Then the other thing that you may look at the, the invoicing option. The, the invoicing options. We can also negotiate discuss on the on these markups. And the, we need to know how those are going to be. We are not going to go into the specifics of knowing how to calculate them but those are supposed to be for accountants but here we just get the percentages that we will be told the percentage to to use if i told it is applicable because not everything that we are talking about here is going to be is going to be needed for us to adjust for so as I said, if we add a markup, a default markup, you put it here. But these ones we shall handle them in later modules. We shall see how to set up these markups, but I just want to show you where they are. So, as I told you, some of those options you can put them on, others you can put them off. But what you put on and what you put off has an as a repercussion on what will be the icons on the home screen as we've seen what how you answer those questions dictates the icons that you are going to be having on your screen so you be careful when you are going through the easy step interview so The good thing now we have gone through all of these preferences and now I'm very sure you know how to change preferences. So with that, we, we can go ahead and learn how to work with users 
other users in QuickBooks. So we are going to head over to video number three and we are going to be talking about how to work with users. We'll see you there.